Award-winning natural bodybuilder and international executive chef Ramel Griardi shares his best recipes for building strength. Sports performance trainer and nutrition expert Joe Arco coaches us through the nutritional components of those recipes and shares his knowledge working with professional athletes. Mouth-watering tender steak can be pretty expensive. So today on Body Fuel, bodybuilding chef Ramel and I are going to show you a very unique way of taking an inexpensive cut of meat and making it taste like uh, butter. Like butter. We're also going to add in my wife's favorite dish, a three bean Mexican salad. That's right. We're going to use a nice flank steak, a very inexpensive cut of meat, but it actually tastes quite good. And it's actually more nutritious for you because it has a little less fat on it. We're going to use some nice, healthy, nutritious, protein-packed white kidney beans. We're going to use some chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Garbanzo. And some black beans as well, too. Now, the flank steak is actually a cheaper cut of meat. Now, what makes this a cheaper cut of meat? Well, because it's a lot less fatty and it's a lot less aged, the meat itself. So what we're going to have to do today is be a little more creative and find out a couple different ways that you're going to show us to take this inexpensive meat and make it taste just like those expensive well, ones. Well, there's so many methods out there and one of the methods is to break it down by using a lot of, you know, acidity. Okay. So basically kind of like a marinade. Exactly. Now what kind of marinade are we going to use today? Well, we're going to use a few different ingredients. One is going to be a little bit of vinegar. Okay. The other one is going to be some citrus or some OJ or orange juice. Now what kind of vinegar or orange juice can we use here or is it just personal preference? Personal preference, personal taste as well. And too. what are we going to be using today? And we're just going to be using some uh, balsamic vinegar okay. and a little bit of orange juice. Now if you don't like this orange juice, you could use some lemon juice, you could use some le lime juice or blood orange if you want to. Blood orange. Blood orange. Blood orange is actually, uh, they take a hybrid of an orange and a rose. Does it smell better? No, it doesn't. <laughs> But what it does, it has a little bit more citrus, a little bit more tanginess to it. Okay. We're going to add some maple syrup and some teriyaki. Now maple syrup is also very high in manganese and zinc. Not only that, but it's a great immune booster. So if you find yourself getting sick or people who train a lot is actually decreasing their immune function, adding a little maple syrup will help bring that back up. So you add it to your protein shakes? You could. You know what? You can add a little bit of uh, maple syrup or even something like honey would do as well. How about agave? Agave is also another one that works. Perfect. Why don't you grab me that bowl, Joe? Sure. So let's start preparing our marinade. Yeah. We're going to use a little bit of teriyaki. Now in terms of quantities here, what are we looking at? You know what? It's all up to the flavor uh, and your taste buds as well too. Okay. We're going to use a little OJ there. So just so I got this straight, we have two ingredients here to help break down the actual fibers of here, uh, of the steak, and then we also have two flavor builders. Exactly. Okay, so the vinegar and the OJ is going to act to kind of break down, the acidity is going to break down some of the, the fibers in the steak, and we've decided to use a maple syrup and a teriyaki for some flavor. That's exactly it. Joe. And a little bit of the maple syrup. Okay. Yeah, give it a little bit of sweetness too there. And what we're also going to add is a little bit of a Pommery mustard, which is a, a seeded Dujon mustard. Again, just for a little more flavor. Exactly. So, could you grab me that whisk, Joe? Sure. Perfect. There you go. We're just going to whisk this whole thing up. Now, in terms of marination and tenderness, what would you recommend the minimum be to marinate this steak? Well. You know, around 20 minutes is enough time for this steak. It's a little thin cut of meat, but if you want to, you could actually marinate this overnight. So if we want like chop house quality, melt in your mouth steak, 20 minutes gonna cut it, or would you recommend like an overnight? I would recommend overnight. Okay. Why don't we start making the salad up, Joe? Okay. Hand you that. So we have three different beans that we're gonna be using here. So let's overview those again. We have some nice white kidney beans some nice garbanzo beans mm -hmm. or chickpeas, and some nice black beans. Why don't you get that all together, Joe? Okay, so we'll throw this in the bowl. Now, the nice thing about using these kidney beans and chickpeas is that they are such a wonderful carbohydrate source, but not only that, a very high protein source. Many people don't realize that, especially for vegetarians who are looking to get a lot of protein in their diet, this is a great way of getting a whole blend of different proteins and amino acids into their diet. So roughly speaking, when we're looking at the kidney beans and the chickpeas, just one cup of those alone will give you approximately 14 grams of protein and 11 grams of fiber, which is quite high and about 35 grams of carbohydrates. Now, even though it seems like a little, like, you know, quite high in terms of carbs, because it's such a high fiber content, it will actually reduce those sugar spikes and the carbs won't affect you like it would, let's say, for example, pasta or some white rice or something like that. Not to mention that the fiber in here is also great for lowering cholesterol and reducing blood pressure as well. So what we're adding now is some nice white onions. Okay. Let's start stirring this around. Yeah, I want you to do that here. Okay. Why don't you grab this? Okay. 
Place that in there, and we're gonna add a little bit of coriander. Now, coriander or cilantro, it's just exactly the same thing, but you know, in Mexico they call it cilantro, and in India they call it coriander, but it's the exact same thing, which is this. It almost looks like a flat leaf parsley. Now, some people don't like the taste of coriander, or they feel it doesn't, doesn't work well with them. So what if you want to do that and you don't want to put the coriander in there, maybe you can put a little bit of flat leaf parsley in there and give that same look. Whatever suits your taste. Exactly. So we're also going to add a little bit of tomatoes. Now tomatoes, we're going to add it as a tomato, what's called concose. What is a concose? Concose is actually diced tomatoes without the seeds inside the seeds. of it. Now why wouldn't you add some of the seeds? Would it just be too liquidy in here? Uh, actually, it's for the look, Joe. All about the look, I'm telling you. I can't even keep up with you. So we're adding the tomatoes. We're just going to slice them open. We're going to take out the actual seeds itself. Now, it's really not a very long process to do this, but you know what? If the look is what we're after here, it's a short little step to take, but it's going to make this uh, the salad look a lot better. So we're taking out the, the seeds itself, and we're just going to use the fleshy part of the tomato. We're going to do a quick dice. Now, do you incorporate a lot of different beans into your diet? I do actually incorporate a lot of beans into my diet because you know what? I like the source of carbohydrates and the high protein that it has. And the glycemic level is so low that, you know, it still helps me out without and makes me feel full without having to be actually full. So if you are looking to stay lean, especially for the, a lot of the athletes that I train, I highly recommend a lot of different varieties of beans because like Ramel was saying, it does add a lot of protein to the diet, a lot of fiber to the diet as well. So a lot of people who are, you know, kind of following a high protein diet usually lack a lot of the fiber fiber as well. So this is a nice blend of making sure you're getting some fiber and some good quality carbohydrates for the energy for the workouts. This is already starting to smell wonderful. We've got the onions, the coriander, we've got the three beans in here. So we're gonna start with a little bit of a dressing now. We're gonna use some lime as well too. And we're gonna use their juices as well too. Now what are the benefits of using the rind as well as the juices? You know, you know the flavor actually comes from the rind. It really doesn't come from the juices itself. And all the essential oils is actually from the rind, not the juice itself. Mm. So we're gonna add that together. Take our lime and our lemon, and we're gonna juice those two. We use both uh, full lemon, full lime? Full lemon, full lime. Okay. A lot more citrus flavors here. So what we're doing is we're just taking the juice off that lime. Would you like to grab a little bit of that oil there, Joe? Sure. Beautiful. Throw that in here. Throw a little bit Say in there. When. when. Okay. Now I love using lemons and limes and pretty much all of my dishes, not to mention I use a lot when I'm drinking a lot of water. It's a great antibacterial. It's also a good kind of uh, fungus killer as well. So you notice a lot of times when you go to a restaurant and you see the lemons and limes on the, on the glasses, commonly they use that just to kill a lot of the bacteria found in the water or on the glass. Now, as you can see, we're just making a quick little marinade. Just a lot of the lime and lemon is actually found in a lot of Mexican uh, cuisine. That's gonna be great. Can you toss that together there, Joe? Beautiful. So once the, uh, the sauce is on here, we have our dressing. We're going to let this also kind of fuse together. Yeah, just marinate. marinate. All together, yeah. We'll set this aside. Oh, it's already smelling amazing. You know what, Joe? I think it's time to start searing off our meats. Okay, so this has been marinating for a little bit. We'll throw this on a nice high heat. Beautiful. There you go. So before we throw that steak in, we'll make sure that this pan is nice and hot. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to that. Oh, smell that. The smell just kills me. You know, the, the smell, the flavor, you're going to see a beautiful looking dish. You know what? Remember, every time you're eating, you eat with your eyes first, not your palate. So make sure that that food looks as good as it tastes. Now, how, how hot do you want this before we start actually putting this on You want a here? nice high heat there because you want that to actually sear off. So you're locking in a lot of those juices. There. Now, what's the cooking process that we're gonna use here with the steak? We're gonna sear it off and then we're gonna place it into our oven. So that's nicely dancing there. Okay. Wanna grab uh, those tongs there? And just add our meats Definitely on top hot. there? 
Whoa, now that's a fire. We call that fired hot. Now, how long do we want that to sear for? We want to sear it off maybe a minute and a half. So basically just enough to get the, uh, the outside nice and brown, a little crispy on the outside. We're using high heat on this and it's just searing it off. So what's going to happen, sometimes you get those flash points where because of the, uh, the vinegar itself having a little bit more alkaline in there, it's going to have a little bit of flash. Now you're not going to expect that when you have electric heat because the fact is you don't have gas. Yeah, flame. Exactly. So nicely seared both sides. You can smell the sweetness from the maple syrup. Now we're going to place this into our oven. Let me guess, 350. 350. 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. Beautiful, look at that, Joe. Oh. Almost has a glaze to it Smells because, of the, fantastic. because of the maple syrup. Now I'm looking forward to seeing how tender this really is. Well, can you grab me that plate, Joe? Sure. Now, usually I would let it rest for a little longer. Now what do you mean by rest? Resting meaning that I would tent it with a little bit of, yep, a little bit of aluminum foil there. And I would let it rest that way the juices come back together into the meat. Now we're gonna take our flank steak and we're gonna slice this up. Okay. Now, Joe, when you're slicing up a flank steak or any type of meat at all, what you wanna do is you wanna actually look at where the fibers are going. Okay. Now, you want to make sure that you're not cutting with the grain. You wanna cut against the grain itself. Now, I'm assuming a lot of common mistakes is when you see this thin piece of you know, steak here, you kinda of wanna cut this way. Yeah. But that's the wrong way of doing that's it. That's exactly it. Okay. What you're doing is you're cutting with the grain. Now, what's gonna with happen the grain, in terms of tenderness? Exactly, it's gonna be gone because the fibers are gonna be very long. You want a short fiber, short grain. So what you want to do is you want to cut your meat this way gotcha. against, so going against the, the grain. grain. Exactly. So, so a couple of sweet it. tips here in terms of making an uh, inexpensive cut of meat taste like a very expensive, nice, juicy cut of meat. First, we started with that tenderizing with the marinade. And how you cut the steak will also affect how tender and juicy it is too. And look at that, Joe. That looks fantastic. It's nice, medium rare. I love medium rare. So do I. Now, let's grab that salad. Okay. Place it on here. Now, why don't you grab me that plate, a little bit of three bean salad here. So again, a nice high fiber, complex carbohydrate, three bean salad, giving you all the energy you need to fuel your workouts. Look at those colors, Joe. Now that looks fantastic. You know what? I always say that you eat with your eyes first, not with your palate. So you know what? You want to make sure that that food that you're making looks as good as it tastes. And this looks fantastic right now. Now, see how we have the nice three beans out and we're just gonna layer our pieces of flank steak on there. Now this flank steak here is a nice lean cut of meat and three ounces of this flank steak is gonna give you approximately 24 grams of protein. We've got about a six ounce piece right here. So you're looking at about 48 grams of protein and a nice source of complex carbohydrates. So when you're looking to pack on some muscle and you wanna fuel your workouts, this is a perfect meal for you right here. Look at that, Joe. That looks fantastic. You know what, we're just gonna layer all those pieces of meat on That's top That's a nice there. presentation. It's gorgeous. And we're gonna add a little bit of the coriander. Now the coriander is what we actually use to marinate some of the food. So that'll and kind of blend dressing. in nicely. So it's gonna come in and blend off really that looks nicely. Great. We're just gonna look place that on top there and look at that, Joe. So next time you finish working out, you're looking for the perfect meal to help rebuild some muscle tissue, we have some perfect steak here for you. Now we've taken an inexpensive cut of meat and made it taste just like Butter? Like butter. If you're looking for a muscle building recipe to help keep you lean, but also fuel you for your workouts, this is the perfect dish for you.